Come on down here. You got yourself here, Joe. Now, where's old Morgan? Uh-huh. Ooh, my well, shot must have been a mite high. I was aiming for his shoulder. Oh, Reese, you're not telling me you picked him off. Well, now, of course I did. His head popped up, so I took my gun and I, Reese, I just... With that sun shining like it was in our eyes, we couldn't see anything behind these rocks. Did you ever hear of clouds? Clouds? Uh, looky here, Reese. Uh, now, why don't we settle this thing for good and all? You go over there and pump another slug into Morgan. Now, just one minute, Joe. Ain't you got no respect for them that just departed? Now, if you'll uh, keep an eye on this sweet bunch for me, I'll go over there and do it myself. I'll watch them for you, Joe. Go ahead. Well, now, even a, a no-good like Morgan there, he deserves... He ain't gonna feel nothing. I ain't dead. Well, ain't that a big surprise? Morgan, you snake, you snake! Well, you can't blame a man for trying. Who can? Uh, Reese can. Uh, can he, Chad? Well, Reese can do almost anything. Morgan, where you got them horses tied, huh? Why should I have to tell you? Well, I'll tell you why you should tell me, because you're gonna have to walk 20 miles back to Laredo. Uh, that's uh, a little bit more like 30, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, I make it, uh, 30. You will there, uh, up in the Arroyo. It's just, uh, ain't your day, is it, Morgan? Uh, we'll get the horses, Reese. How about you and that shot you had at Morgan, Reese? Just never you mind. Never you mind. Easy, boy. Just uh, take it easy. Ah! Now hold on, boy. Ah! Yeah. Well, now uh, that's uh, that's some better, boy. Captain, if he tried to keep all these pocket clocks going at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but he'd have known the time of day. <laughs> uh, never mind about the pocket clocks. What about my 200 head of prime beef you were looking for? Well, I can guarantee you, Stan, that it wasn't Morgan that wrestled your prime beef. That's just about what I figured to hear. I know something you don't know a blame thing more about them cows than you did before. Stan, we've we got, got patrols out. Yeah, I know. But they ain't finding nothing. And they ain't finding nothing because them cows ain't in Texas. The Mexican police are cooperating with us. I just sent Reese down to join the other men. Yeah. Stan, where are you going? Connolly, stand around waiting in my long suit. Hmm. Well, Captain, maybe, uh, maybe Joe and me could run across. No. Uh, how come you two are so positive that Morgan didn't wrestle Stan's herd? Oh. Well, sir, we, uh, we figured it out all logical-like. Well, Joe... 
Maybe you could kind of explain it to me. Well, sir, for one thing, there wasn't a pair of shaps among the bunch. Now, let me tell you something, Captain. A man would have needed a pair of shaps out there, because if he didn't have them, the chaparral on Grievy's land would have cut his legs plumb to smithereens. Makes sense. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, another thing, Captain. The bunch that Morgan was riding with, well, they were tough as those kind of bunches come, but they're, they're not the type of guys to go around rustling cattle and that kind of stuff, because that's just too much work for them. And that makes sense. Thank you, sir. Well, sir, uh, them is the facts, but, uh, but I wasn't convinced. Uh, no, sir, I wasn't 100% convinced until I... Till, uh, till, uh, what, Joe? Well, I... M tell the captain, Joe. Come on. <laughs> well, all I did was uh, snatch Morgan up by the neck and shake him a little, sir. If he'd have known where them cows was, I'm sure he would have told me. Now, Joe, I didn't hear what I thought I heard you say, did I? Well, sir, all I did was... Because if you manhandle a prisoner... Captain, a man like Joe Riley, a man of his integrity, manhandling a prisoner? Why, sir, he would never do a thing like that? Why, why that's illegal. Sir, I would never do nothing again the law, and, and that's the pure gospel. Joe, I know that's the truth. Yes, sir. Uh... Captain Parmalee, sir, uh, uh, Chad and I haven't had anything to eat for a while, and it... All right. Great. Thank Back you. in an hour. What? But... Back, back in an hour? But, but Captain, we've been, we've been on the trail five hard, long days. Uh, sir, we kind of had ourselves a, a relaxing type evening planned. Y yes, sir, and, and you really can do a, a whole lot of relaxing in... In an hour. Mind telling me just one thing? Whose idea was it to keep this young buck? What do you expect to accomplish up there on that rafter? Now get down. Oh, now, Chad, we can get him down off there. Well, all we gotta do is go up that ladder and hop up on that beam and, and haul him down. Yeah. Oh, look, I'll stay down here and I'll make sure he doesn't run out when he gets down. All right. Uh, Joe, huh? what do you mean by you go on up that ladder, Chad? Your leg ain't broke. Well, now, Chad, if you, if you can't do it, I, no. I'd be glad to. Joe, I didn't say I couldn't do it. Well, Chad, I don't need no excuse. Now, look out, boy. Let me go. Just hold on. I'll do it. All right. Get you down. Now don't move away from me. Just, just stay right where you are. What's the matter with you, boy? Cat got your tongue? Speak English? Joe! Joe, my spurs caught. Give me a hand. Well, I dogged if it ain't. You got yourself in a real fix there, Chad. You gonna put me in jail? I already told you, boy, we're not gonna put you in jail. What's your name? La Sota. Great smoke. Now, you listen to me, Grace Moe. The first thing we're Union? gonna... Union? No. You know Comanche talk? Well, I grew up with the Comanches. You got a big yell. Well, I had good teachers. I went to mission school. I can tell. I can tell you speak real good English. You're not gonna put me in jail? No. For why? Boy, 
Did you ever hear of Big River? You know him? He was one of my teachers. Big Indian. Strong. But he was wise. Wise, Gray Smoke. He told me one time that a boy can't be good or bad. All he can be is right or wrong. Now, you running with that Morgan gang, that was wrong. Morgan give me food and blankets. You a thief, boy? No. Take to eat sometimes, nothing else. Now, that's the only thing. The only thing, son. Stopped us from throwing you in jail with the rest of them outlaws. You understand? Let's go. Thanks, Joe. You betcha. Come on. steaks and some bread and butter and start with a couple of beers, huh? Thank you. Well, I'm about as tired as I can be, Joe. That old captain's saying be back in an hour. I wonder if he yet. Uh... Who, Captain? Is that scrawny Indian kid, too. Well, he he does look a mite peek at Joe. Of course, of course, we can't give him nothing to eat. Give him something to eat, well, we'd never be able to get rid of him. Hungriest looking boy I ever saw. Of course you're right, Joe. You're absolutely right. We don't dare give him something to eat. Chad. Chad, you haven't got any feelings. Why, well, that boy won't go back to the reservation because he's hungry. He's hungry. Now, if we give him a steak to eat, you just watch how quick he'll hightail it out of here. I'll watch. You, uh, you hungry, boy? Oh, Riley, the ranger here would like to buy you a steak, Gray Smoke. Okay. Uh, but don't do me no favors. Put yourself down, lad. <clears throat> Cyril, make that three steak. Make that three steaks. Well, now, who we got standing at the bar, Joe? Dead Charlie Stamp? I wonder what he's doing here. Why don't you go ask him? Maybe I will. You reckon, uh, you reckon you need any help, Chad? <clears throat> well, now. Howdy, Charlie. What's new, Chad? Nothing much. What you doing here in Laredo? Nothing. Just got here. Mm hmm Who's he? Friend of mine. What's his name? Pick one. Changes every day. <laughs> yeah, but you don't change every day, do you? You arresting us, Chad? Well, I don't know. You wanted? Not that I know of. Let's keep it that way. Hmm? You know that other fella? Sam Tupper. Sam Tupper? Oh, he's another gunfighter. So the story goes. Uh, well, Joe, uh, how much time you figure we got before we got to get back to Captain's office? About 20 minutes. Well, oh, I'm off for a good hot bath. Dog, if that ain't a good idea. <laughs> I'm still waiting, Joe. What for? 
The one that young Indian buck's gonna hightail it? Is he uh, still back there, Chad? Well, just turn yourself around, Port. Come here, boy. Come on in here. Now, why didn't you do like we asked you to, boy? Don't you figure maybe your ma and pa are gonna be wondering what become of you? Got none. Well, now, look at here, Gray Smoke. Somebody in that tribe must be looking out after you. Nobody. Smoke? Smoke, Indians don't act like that. Somebody... Nobody. Would you... Would you run off the reservation, boy? What for? My pa stole horses. Run off. My mom went with him and left me in that mission school. Well, now you know the tribe ain't gonna fault you for what your pa did. Well, you know that's a fact, Grace Smoke. Won't go back to the reservation till I got the gold to pay for the horses my pa took. <clears throat> well, how much would that be, Grace Smoke? Maybe Joe and I can... Too many horses. And I gotta earn that gold. You got guts, boy. Yes, sir. You got guts. <laughs> There you go, Grey Smoke. <laughs> Scrub yourself good, boy. In a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine, lived a miner, 49er, and his daughter, Clementine. <laughs> now, Joe, I've been telling you, you've been leaving out the best of that song. Doggone it, that's not the point I've been leaving out. Let's go again. In a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine. But not too short, Joe, and, and leave him some sideburns. Well, you leave me be, Chad, and let me get this thing done in peace. Joe, I really think we ought to take him to the barbershop. Oh, shut up, Chad. You're disturbing the artist in me. Well, shucks, look how good I cut my own hair. Uh, just like I said, we ought to take him to the barbershop. Cooper, we ain't got time. Now, will you just let me get this thing done? All right, all right. Go ahead. You ready, boy? And if anything goes wrong with it, you just trot it back. We'll fix her up good as new. Well, <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'll find out. After me. I just thought it... Hey, Sam, whenever you can, we're kind of hurry here, folks. Uh, in just a minute, Chad. Uh... Why do you keep the boys closed? <laughs> oh, they're right over... I said after me. Now, you tell me again about how you fix it if anything goes wrong. Hey, I didn't hear you, Sam. Tell me. Well, we... We stand behind our merchandise, and if... Where'd you say you kept the... You, uh, you don't mind if Sam tells me where some things are, do you, Jug? You're a lucky man, Riley. My name is Jug Harriet. Put this on my bill. Oh, oh, now. Uh, everything in this store is cash and carry. You're pushing it, Riley. Jug, pay for it or leave it late. Down to Sam. Down. Well, there's two dollars too much. Forget it. Oh, no. No, let's give this gentleman his change. And that way, he won't never have a reason to come in this store again. I come and go as I please. Really, Jug Harriet? That's him. 
He, uh, he didn't say why he was in Laredo, did he, Sam? No, he didn't, but, well, it's, it's got to be a killing. For a minute, I was afraid it was going to be yours. Uh, not while I'm facing it. Uh, Joe, MX-3. Chad, MX-4. Wherever Jug Harriet goes, Ellis Snyder's bound to go, too. True. Uh, Sam. Uh, Sam, we need us an outfit for this here boy. Hey, that's right. Oh, uh, style or for comfort? Oh, a little bit of both, Sam. Uh, boots, too? Boots, too. How about a shirt? And a hat. And a hat. Uh, and not that one. <laughs> uh, you, you like this, sir? How about this one? Let's try it. You want me to what? Take this young fella into the Rangers, Captain. You, you did say he was 14. Uh, well, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir, the best he can tell, he's, uh, he's 14. Now, how many 14-year-old Rangers do you know? Joe? Chad? <sighs> well, sir, Joe didn't exactly explain it right. You try. All right, sir. Now, now, now this young fellow, well, he just hasn't got anybody. His pa was a horse thief, and, well, he just flat refuses to go back to the reservation. Now, well, Joe he's and I... Indian. Indian. Comanche. Comanche. You forgot to mention that. Well, sir, it just, uh, it just plumb slipped our minds. And his father was a horse thief. Well, now, that's right, Kim, but now you take my word for it, this boy has got the makings of a fine ranger. I'm sure. And one other thing, Captain, I mean, <laughs> we don't expect for the, the boy to be able to go out on assignments, not right away, but, well, we thought he could clean the guns, take care of the horses, and see to the supplies. Hey, Kim, we... We kind of thought of him as a company runner. Yeah, that's right. You ain't never seen anybody run like he can, Captain, and, and, and climb, climb. Why, that boy can climb better than anything I ever saw. You, you want to see the way he goes up a raft here, Captain? Why, right up to the top, one, two, three. Uh, right, Chad? Right, Joe. Very smart. Yes, sir. Do you, uh... Want to join the Rangers? Yes, sir. The man I'm looking for knows horses. I do, sir. He'll also be company runner. That's a very important job. Yes, sir. He'll be in charge of the barracks. He'll make sure every gun rack is kept locked at all times and every weapon is cleaned before it's put away. Yes, sir. You think you can handle that job? Yes, sir. Every man who joins this outfit goes through a period of probation. You understand? Yes, sir. He does his job, he stays. If he doesn't? Yes, sir. All right, Ranger. You're on half pay starting right now. You know where the barracks is? Yes, sir. You go over there and you find yourself an empty bunk. And you stable your horse with our stock. And look around. You report tomorrow morning here at 6 o'clock for duty. Dismissed. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're a great chapman, just great. You two find something humorous in my procedure for enlisting personnel in the Rangers? <clears throat> uh, no, sir. No, sir. Not me. I. No, sir. All right. You two are on duty in town tonight, sleeping shifts. Oh, oh Captain, Cap, we just we just come in off the train. Are we that shorthanded? I was Company B until you came in this morning. Everybody else is out after the rustlers. Well, I, uh... I sure hope the word didn't get out, Captain. Why, Joe? Well, we just seen uh, <coughs> Charlie Stamp, Tupper, uh, Jug Harriet in town. Ellis Snyder with Harriet? We didn't see him, but uh... I'll give odds that he's here, too. You two make a tour around town. See if you can find out why they're here. Right, yes, sir. <laughs> Cross a couple, will you, It's Ellis Snyder over there with Jug Harrigan. That's him, huh? Well, Ellis never changed. Hmm. Thank you. Thanks, nice, boy. Looks, uh, looks like we got one more friend in town, Chad. 
You need some help, Joe? Fred Cheney. But you still in jail, Fred. I've done my time, Joe. What you doing in Laredo? I'm having a drink. Well, not dogged if you ain't. But what you gonna do then, Fred? I'm gonna have another. Well, now you have a real good time. Never seen that one before, Joe. Fred Cheney. Fred Cheney? Well, I thought he hanged. He should have. Hmm. Chad, did you ever have the feeling that you were sitting on a powder keg and uh, just about ready to explode? Why, Joe? Because there's five mangy gun slicks in town? No, Chad, because there's eight mangy gun slicks in town. but would you believe who I just saw in the street below? Timothy O'Brien. Uh, that's nine. Yeah, and it's sure no coincidence that the, all them fellers are here at the same time. What sure is? It's about as much coincidence as there is in thunder and lightning turning up in the same rainstorm. Yeah. Chad, I think we ought to go over to that saloon and grab them all and throw them in the calabozo. Well, now, Joe, you know we can't do that. Can't arrest a man just for being in town. Chad, what if we went over there and ordered them to turn in their guns while they're in town? Now, that way, they're bound to do something we can arrest them for. Wouldn't work. Oh, but I got an idea, Joe. Why don't we go over the saloon, order all them fellas to turn in their guns while they're in town, and that way, they're bound to do something we can arrest them for. I just got through saying that. What's what you just got through saying? Why, you... <laughs> oh, no. Since this is your idea, Chad, uh... You mosey on over to the saloon, and I'll just sit here quiet and wait for you while you tell those no-goods to, to turn in their guns. Mm -hmm. All right, Joe, just go ahead and sit here, quiet and peaceful-like, and uh, miss all the excitement. I ain't gonna miss nothing. <coughs> Whoa, boss, you, you mind telling me where you're heading? Well, I'm going, uh, I'm going over to the captain's office. And am I gonna have fun watching you squirm while he's chewing you out for stirring up them gun slicks? <laughs> <laughs> well, you get through dancing with that carpet bag, you'll find me in the captain's office. wasn't in there. Well, who wasn't in there? Captain Parmalee's who, Chad? Well, of course he wasn't in there, Joe. The man's standing right over there. Well, I can see that. Well, now, Joe, if you can see that, why did you go in the office looking for him when you knew he was out here? Because I didn't know he was out here. Well, all you had to do was ask me, and I'd have told you. Look, Joe, <laughs> why are you going over there? The man's in the office. <laughs> What do you want, Joe? Well, I think we ought to... Well? I forgot. <laughs> well, wasn't it something to do with that idea of yours about how to handle them gunfighters? What if we tell them mangy no-goods they got to turn in their guns while they're Can't in town? Can't do that, Joe, not unless I take the guns away from every other man in town. Well, every other man in town ain't a gun slick. The Rangers have a reputation being fair. I am not going to jeopardize. It was too hard to come by. If they stay in line, it'll be treated like any other citizen. No, that's like, that's like telling a man he can't shoot a rattlesnake until it bites him. Yeah, but that's the law. Chad Cooper, you were just much for this idea as I was. I know. So am I. But we've got to wait him out. Captain, what, what if you were just to ride out of town for maybe just a couple of hours and then Joe and... and... 
make uh, no, huh? You two keep a close rein in that Laredo saloon. And if you see Stan Grady and his foreman in town, have him come by. I'll be here. Well, Joe, you know what I don't figure for it is all them fellas in town at the same time, why well, they haven't had a big fight yet. I mean, there's no love most between them. Yeah, it is a wonder that they uh, haven't got around a matching reputation. Hey, because I know for a fact that Charlie Stamp has been wanting to try Jug Harriet now for a long time. Sure is peculiar. Well, sir, there's one thing that could be keeping them apart. Keeping them off each other's back, and that's money. Yeah, I reckon. Let's move around some. fight the gunslingers. Smoke, there's not gonna be any fight. No rangers in the barracks. Just you and me and nine gunslingers in that saloon. They gotta be here for something. That kind, there's gotta be a fight. Hey, there's Stan Gravy pulling up the bank. Huh? We're we supposed to tell him something? Oh, yeah, the captain wants to see him. It was 1300 you wanted, correct, Mr. Gravy? That was 1300 in gold I wanted. That don't look like gold to me. Ooh, well, but you didn't make any mention well, of it. Well, I'm making mention of it now. No, I'll have to get out of the safe. It'll only take me a minute. Yeah. Well, that'll give you time to point over to the office and talk to the captain. I got nothing to see him about. Hey, he thinks you do. Ghost. Man. Don't you try to bully me, right? Well, I... Sit down, Stan. I've got some good news for you. I'll just stand up. I ain't staying long. I got a telegram from Timmins, Parker, and Reese. Those are the three I sent down to Mexico. Well, did you find my cattle? Fifty head. Fifty head. Well, I lost 200 head this last time and 120 before that. That ain't many to find. They're still at it, Stan. Well, you could just tell them to get on at it. Don't be so blame cantankerous. Ah, them Mexicans. They think they can just hop over the river and hit all us ranches that have spreads near the border and get away clear. Well, them other ranchers can sit back and wait for you to make a move and Hades to freeze. But Stan Greavy ain't a man to stand around waiting for nothing. And I ain't. No more than I done already. Hold it, Stan. I said my piece and I'm going. You haven't been doing any hiring lately, have you? What I do and when I do is my own business. Out of my way, Riley. Stan Greavy, you got a loose brain. Now, listen, you're looking for a pop in the eye, you come to the right You hire those gunslingers, Stan? You bet your sweet life I did. To cross the border? And to find my cattle and make anybody doggone unhappy if I didn't. You want to start another border war, Stan? Start nothing. Them no good Russians did the start, and I had to do the finishing. How many men died in the last border war, Stan? How many homes were burned on both sides of the river? How many good ranches wiped out? How many great men died? How many women and children? You know what started it, Stan? You know what started the border war? Some cantankerous old fool who took his droves across the river because somebody rustled part of his herd. And once that killing started... Yeah. There wasn't nobody could stop it. And they were just ranch hands, Stan. Not professional gunslingers. Well, I guess I done a dumb thing, Parmley. I guess you did. Won't you be so gentle on yourself? Well, I'll pay them off and send them on their way. What happens, Stan, if they don't want to go on their way? 
Well, you can count on my gun. I'll stand right there with you. Well, now, ain't you the brave soul? Dan, you ought to go off someplace and hide your face. Listen, I ain't never hid from nothing. Ain't always done right, but ain't never hid. I'll give them the money, and odds are they'll go. Second thought, uh, maybe you better get the rest of your men together in just case they don't. This is it, Stan. You mean just the three of you? Four. That's right. Don't you forget it. Four. in there with him and run him out of there. They haven't done anything, Joe. Well, they will. They will. But we'll be ready. Oh, Gray Smoke, go outside and let me know when Mr. Greedy goes in the saloon. Yes, sir. Ain't he got a lot of guts for a kid his age? Yes, he has. And that could be big trouble if a fight starts. Yeah, we don't want him running around loose in the streets with a shooting going on. Chad, take the livery stable. Joe, take the alley beside the general store, and I'll take the bank, and we'll clear the streets. Well, what? You're not a blessed soul out there. Ranger Graysmoke, Captain. Stan Gravy just went in the saloon. Good. Graysmoke, you're in charge of the office. Let's get moving. Yes, sir. point in us going looking for cattle that's already been found. So I'll give you the $50 each that I promised you. What about the two bits ahead we're supposed to get for all the cattle we bring back, Gravy? Now, wait a minute. I'm trying to be fair with you, boys. $50. Listen, Gravy. Some of us rode from a long way off just for only $50. I know, but, well, it just can't be helped. Now, Mr. Gravy, you got the money with you? Sure. Got it right here. Well, why don't you lay it on the table? All right. Here we are. Thank you. All right, all right. All right, all right. Don't get riled. I don't plan on taking out the gold. Just one chance to say something. You need a gun for that, Jug? No. Not for you, Charlie. All right, Jug. Say what you've got to say and get it over with. We want our money. And I've been in town since this morning. I hope that don't mean you want more than your 50. Charlie, you're just two words this side of being dead. Ever since I come into Laredo, I've been counting ranges. All I saw was three, including Parmalee. It's Chad Cooper, Joe Riley, and him. Any of you seen others? All right, one of the other of us knows every ranger there is. If we ain't seen him, then they ain't here. So, here we are in Laredo. And there's nine of us, and three of them. And this town is ripe. Nobody ever tried it before on account of too many rangers here, but there ain't too many rangers here now. And boy, this is just a spit and a whistle away. I say, let's take it. Let's clean out the town. Hmm? Tom? Junior? All right, only one condition. I get Joe Riley. I think I'd like to try Cooper. <laughs> Not on your best day, Charlie. He's mine. Well, it's your hide. You uh, want one of us to call his name so you can get a better look at his back? <laughs> <laughs> when this is over, Jug, you and me, huh? Yeah. Any time. I had equal shares on everything, agreed? Let's go!
Charlie. Chad's in the stable. You want him? Go get him. I'll get him. Drop it, Charlie, or I'll have to put a bullet in you. You shot me in the leg, Chad. Did I now? Well, you're lucky, Charlie. I wouldn't aim it for your leg. Ellis, you clean out the bank, Junior, you go with him. Down here, Kim. Stand up, slow. Well, thanks for your help, Joe. Anytime, Chad. I've been looking for you, Riley. Yeah, kind of figured.
want some help? Don't eat it. Thanks, Ranger. If you don't look like it, too. Hmm. Maybe you better rest. It's okay, you rest. I'll wash the radar. Oh, make sure you clean the guns before you put them away. <laughs> 